Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Fairfax. We hope you enjoy this sermon from a recent Sunday worship service. Oh my, another water communion. Another time to gather in community as we greet this congregational year to come. Each year feels different in some ways from the others. Certainly every year, every year has its unique joys and challenges, but this year actually does feel a little bit different to me. You know the saying, today is the first day of the rest of your life? Well, <clears throat> in some ways, I feel like that is a bit true for UUCF. We've all been through a lot in the past number of years. I actually don't need to list it all. You all know what we've been through in this country, in the world, and if you have been here long enough in this congregation. But what we've been through really makes me think that this is the first year of a new time for UUCF, a new era, uh, next phase for who we are as a congregation. Our theme for the day is Be Like Water, Flow, and it isn't just for the water communion. In Adrienne Marie Brown's Emergent Strategy, something our congregational leadership has been using as an influence for well, the past six years or so, one of her principles of Emergent Strategy is change is constant, be like water. Change is constant, be like water. That seems like a perfect description for where we are and who we need to be in this pivotal year. We need to be like water and flow past the obstacles we may find to be ready to change direction as we head on our path and come together as individual drops to create a body of water flowing and headed together in the same direction. The same direction is a crucial understanding of our movement forward this year. We're going to undertake what we're calling a living the mission process, as Stacy just discussed, and which won't be modeled after a traditional strategic plan that one might undertake in a corporate setting or here in the government-driven Washington, D.C. area. We're actually a religious community. I know for some of you that's hard to hear, but it's true. And we're going to engage each other in an intentional process of discussion and discernment not just about what goals to achieve, but dreams and hopes and possibilities and what course we can set together as we flow into the future nimble and understanding that we are in a time of rapid change and that the world is aching for the values we hold dear in the practice of this tradition. Now, when I say we're going to take a strategic direction, that means this is the beginning of a journey of hopefully some shared clarity about our mission to transform ourselves, our community, and our world through acts of love and justice. And I say shared clarity because, as I have noted before, over two-thirds of us were not here when this mission was adopted. So we're going to undertake this discernment process in the hopes of understanding what practicing our mission means for now and into the future. Now let me tell you why. You see, every day, every day, on the news and social media, with friends and family, we see things with which we are deeply struggling. Again, I know that you see it, I see it, we all see it. But there is also goodness and happiness and creativity and innovation and joy and a joy of a deep and abiding connection to our common humanity. And this needs us. These things need our intention and attention. This goodness, this joy, this connection to our common humanity, this planet needs people like you to be devoted to doing whatever we can to bring this elusive idea of beloved community into a movement, or at least somehow to make it more real. You children, you adults, 
Our mission, our principles and values are a moral calling to give birth to a great turning as quickly as possible. A turning that turns us toward each other rather than away. That has us recognize the interconnection of our common destiny that speaks to us, not just of survival, but of thriving. All of us thriving. And that helps to transform this very world through acts of love and justice. So as we start this congregational year, as we undertake this water communion, where these disparate bowls of drops of water will magically flow into the middle container, and through gravity as well. <laughs> you children, you adults, our mission, our principles, and our values, this moral call calling that I talk about as we start this congregational year, you are not just pouring drops of water into a glass container. This is a symbolic gesture about coming together, connected in this community, to be like water and to find our path where we can flow together to quench this deep thirst of need in ourselves, in each other, in this community, and in this world. This need for connection. This need for mutual respect and dignity. This need for firmly placing love at the center of all we do and for constantly asking what is the most loving thing I can do right now? So now we embark on this voyage of this year together. I ask that this year we do a little more listening to each other, that we allow ourselves to think more creatively than we do sometimes in our normal everyday lives that we try a little more often to think of the greater good and that we understand that change is absolutely constant. And when we say be like water, what that really means is that now, symbolically and for the rest of this year, we will be in these very challenging times, but we will flow together into an ocean of hope, of joy, and of possibility. And may that be so. Amen. Thank you for listening to this sermon from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Fairfax. To listen to more sermon podcasts, go to uucf.org slash worship hyphen services and scroll down to sermon podcasts.